GLSL.io aims to build an open collection of GLSL transitions. So this is GLSL.io. As you can see in the gallery, you have different transitions which are animations performed with GLSL, with WebGL on the web. And as you can see, it's really awesome effects you can make with this technology. And it's really powerful and it compiles to the graphic card, so it's very efficient. And it's available on all browsers, almost recent browsers. And it's also uh, uh, OpenGL technology, so you could use it in OpenGL. So let's take a look at the first example. As you can see here, you have uh, user parameters to be able to customize a transition. And here you, we have two parameters, smoothness and opening. And if I play a bit with it, I can just customize a bit more the transitions. So you have an uh, incredible number of tr possible transitions with just one GLSL. Let's take a look at another example. Here you have a nice ripple effect and I can just change the amplitude of the ripple or the speed. So I can make really cool effects. On the right part, you have the GLSL code, which is actually used for rendering the GLSL. So this is the editor. You can do everything with this. And now let's see how we can create a new transition. We can click on create a new transition here. And you, we just go to the editor, which is the default template now. And as you can see, it's just a fade transition. And we are just going to try a bit moving the P vector. And if we do a simple transition translation, you can see that the image is affected. And we're just going to use a new vector, which is P2, which for now is will be P. And let's see what happens if we multiply P by itself. So if we do the power of two, so we have this cool effect. The P2, as you can see, is uh, the parameter which is used to look up at the texture, the position of the, in the image. So ju just for the example, we are going to do this up to do this tra transition, having this effect of uh, transforming the power. And we, we're going to use a uniform called power, which can easily be used to change the power in the position. And now we're, what we are going to do is to try to mix this uh, new vector with the original vector. And the mix is done with the uh, progress. We want to mix with the progress because it moves from 1 to 0. And we, we have to make sure that the 0 is a from image and the 2 is a to image. To do that, we are going to use some uh, functions of GLSL, like distance. And we now have this effect. Quite cool, right? And you can just change a bit the parameter. It's cool because it has been inferred from my uniforms. And why not introducing a new uniform, a boolean, which will say that my destination image should not be affected by the uh, power effect. So to do that, we just have to use this boolean when we look up for the two texture. And if we uncheck th this, then we have our effect. OK, so it's quite cool, right? We can have infinite number of variants of a same transition. It's quite cool, right? It's just changing a bit the uniform values. So to go back to, OK, just finishing up. So the, the two image should also be the right image, right? So we also need to 
take care of this power dust. And now we have our transition. It should work with or without the power dust act activated. Okay, cool. So when once you have finished uh, your transition, you can create it and you have to be logged in with uh, your GitHub account. And you have this create a new GIST button, which will create on GitHub, on GIST, your transition. And basically, it has the, it has the two things has been done here, forking the template and saving the, your transition. And when we publish it, it means that we give a name to it, and then it will appear in the gallery. And we will see after what happens in the GIST. So here we saved it, and if you go to the gallery, you can see it. Cool, right? And mm, yeah, maybe I could trick a bit the parameters. So let's go back on it. I check this, save it again, go to the gallery, and then it is saved. OK, cool. So here you have the GIST link. And if I click on it, I go to the GIST, which contains my GLSL code. It also contains a JSON, which contains the uniforms I've given and the license. And you have all the revisions, all the changes you made. And if you go back to the, in history, you see that I fork a template, then I change the code, and then I rename the file. So you have all the history kept. It's quite cool. Okay, thanks for watching.